Hi, and welcome to The Digital Guitarist. Today, I wanted to discuss the quick and easy method for getting a guitar to play through your Windows computer at the least cost and trouble. When you're done, you'll have a working Windows electric guitar setup that includes an amp and effects. If you have a Mac and want to achieve the same thing, explore GarageBand to start out. Linux users will get to you in a future video. About the music, all the music played today comes from me, Rich Rath, or my experimental duo with Eric Parker, Replay, note the two R's. You can hear more on my SoundCloud or at replay.com, R-R-E-P-L-A-Y. All the guitar is played through either the amp I am providing today or another free amp I'll mention later. Here's what you'll need. An electric guitar and a Windows computer, a set of headphones or speakers, and some cabling to put them all together. The better the speakers are, the better your amp will sound, but don't fuss, use what you have. You'll also need a regular guitar patch cable and an adapter to get the cable into the computer. We'll discuss that next, since everything else is already there. Find the audio in and out on your sound card. Unless it is a newer ultra portable, there will usually be a microphone input and speaker output. Hook up a speaker or headphones. Use, avoid using Bluetooth for this as it will introduce a lag called latency that will make playing difficult. We'll see this concept of latency is crucial for playing a guitar live through your computer. Our goal is to minimize it as much as possible, so no Bluetooth. To get your guitar sound in, you'll need a quarter inch female to eighth inch male mono audio adapter. If there's only one jack in your computer, you'll need to get a breakout cable, usually one with four rings on the, on the plug end and two separate jack inputs marked for a mono mic and a stereo out. I've included links to the adapters below. I'd appreciate you using the links to purchase as it gives me a little bonus I use to keep my website operating. Plug your guitar into the mic input and your speakers or phones into the stereo output. Now for the hardest part, but it isn't so bad. You can actually skip this set, step, but it will cause greater latency and less enjoyment when you play. We're going to install a pro audio driver called ASIO for All. The link is below. It's a pro sound driver that minimizes the time between when you hit the strings and when the sound comes out. With the regular Windows Direct Sound or MME drivers, the lag is noticeable and makes playing in time tricky. Okay, hit pause on the video, download and install ASIO for All from the link below. Go ahead, I'll wait here. Once you have your connection, you need a virtual amp. There are a ton of free ones and a lot of them are great. I'm going to pick an oldie but goodie freeware amp called, wait for it, free amp, because it has a whole bunch of effects included and the amp sounds are great. One of the presets is used in the current song you are hearing from Replay's third album, Falling Through Frames. Since we are going for easy, I've packed up free amp into a standalone Windows program. It is actually a VST, about which more another day. For now, we just want an amp and some sound effects. The download link is below. Uh, it's a zip file that has a directory with an EXE program and a readme text and some other files needed to make the amp go. There's no installation, just unzip it wherever you want to run it from and fire up the free amp application. Kudos to the designer, Fred Sith for making such a great amp, and to Herman Sieb for providing an easy way to pack it up, Savvy Host. Links for both are below, check them out. Uh, the free amp program you launch is a 32-bit program, so it will even run well on that old laptop in the closet if you want to make that a dedicated amp. Plug the guitar into the adapter, plug that into the computer, Use your Windows Control Panel sound applet, uh, applet to make sure that the level is good and the mic input is the recording default. If you need to, adjust the recording level so that your guitar triggers a strong signal but does, does not go into the red. This will make a huge difference in the tone of your final result, so take a moment to tweak the recording input levels now by banging out your loudest chords while watching the meter. 
go ahead, hit pause and fix your levels. I'll wait here. Open up Freya. You may or may not get some sound. If you do, it will probably have some latency, so now we will connect the amp to our ASIO for all driver. Open the devices menu in Freeamp and click Wave. Skip the input and open the drop down menu for the output. Choose ASIO for all. The first time you do this, you'll get a setup screen for ASIO for all. If you don't, you can click on the setup button uh, by going back to devices and click uh, uh, the um, ASIO settings. Set the latency to somewhere around 128 samples. That should work if you don't have a bunch of other programs running. If you have a newer machine, you can probably go down as far as 64 samples. If you get pops and clicks in your audio, go to the Start menu and open the Configuration tab application for ASIO for All and increase the latency. Once you get past 512 samples, the lag starts to get noticeable, so go as low as you can without glitching out the audio. You're all set. Close your dialogues and rock out. I'll wait here if you hit pause. Take your time and enjoy your riffage. Okay, so you've had a chance to try out uh, free amp a little bit. I want to walk you through some of the less obvious controls. So let's start up here with the gate. So uh, the gate consists of a threshold uh, where you set the threshold on a noisy guitar patch so that the uh, sound turns off when you're not playing. And then the neat thing about this one is the attack phase here is actually a long one. So you can do neat kind of pedal steel sort of effects uh, like this. Then let's walk down here to the chub control, which isn't really intuitively named, uh, but basically uh, what that does is it's like a booster circuit uh, uh, so that you can increase your input signal. So it's really just a volume that comes before all the amplification. So uh, And then that's what gets picked up by the gain here, which this is, if you turn that up, you can get lots of distortion. So then, uh, obviously, we've got the low, mid, high presence volume controls. The volume is your last step where you want to set your master volume so that you're not clicking any, clipping anything. Uh, I don't use it. I like to tend to control my uh, volumes uh, without it, but there's a limiter here if you want it, which will prevent it from ever clipping. Uh, so... Uh, then uh, generally I'll leave this set to guitar. Uh, if you have MIDI controllers, you can uh, use them up here, uh, but we're, we're gonna leave that aside for right now. Um, and then uh, down here, you've got a series of three slots for a pedal board. Uh, it's a limiter here if you want it, which will prevent it from ever clipping. Uh, and then uh, down here, you've got a series of three slots for a pedal board. Uh, each pedal has uh, about six or so choices, and the different slots have slightly varying lists of choices uh, depending on where in the signal chain things should come. So the stuff that should be earlier in the signal chain is on this left one, and then once you move into more time-based things like delays and stuff like that, tremolos, they're over here on the right. Uh, now, a cool thing about this uh, is that not only is there the pedals... Cardinal! Crack! So, we press the rack, and uh, here you get another set of three effects, each with a, a half dozen or so choices. Uh, so you can do some post-EQing, and generally on these last two, I'll put either a delay or a reverb, uh, or both, uh, but I like to put those on the rack. Uh, but if you want a different tempo, you can tap the tempo in.
last thing is the speakers. Uh, I tend to like the 2x12 open and the 4x10 bright, but you got a whole range here. Let me show you a couple more presets. Uh, we'll get out of these gated ones and get some regular guitar sound. There's a basic fendery clean sound. bit more oomph in uh, like you can get just on the edge of distortion but back it off by using your uh, dynamics in your playing uh, or turn the volume down a little and you can get a very clean sound but turn it up to 10 and Get a little drive. For more distorted sounds, there's the sort of <laughs> then this one's a very practical rock setting. Uh, if you back the volume off, you get a nice you, you get a nice chunky rhythm, but if you turn it up you get a nice lead too. This is uh, an Ottawa. This one's a cool one. It's just something with a ring modulator pitch shifter and the Ottawa. So, uh... Uh, anyway, there's hours of fun to be had. This is an amp that begs to be uh, dug into and play with all the different settings and effects. So uh, I'll leave you to it. That's it. If you want to hear more of what you can do with preamplification, check out my band Replay's first three albums, all recorded using preamp and another great freebie, the first version of Voxingo Boogex. Thanks a bunch for listening. Jam out. Next time we will introduce the concept of a host and plugins. Stay tuned and tell your guitarist friends you just got a whole bunch of new amps for free. That's it for this session. Don't forget to subscribe to the Digital Guitarist YouTube channel and have a listen to my music at way.net, soundcloud, and replay.com with two R's. Thanks and see you soon.